On this red hot edition of Fulton at Work, Fire Chief Larry Few is here to talk about the county's three new fire engines and their unmatched strength and performance. And Deputy Fire Chief Charles Stubbs finds out if you have what it takes to be a firefighter. I'm Daryl Carver. All of this and more is coming up on Fulton at Work. Please stay with us. Welcome to our show. I'm Daryl Carver. The unveiling of three new fire engines is helping the Fire and Rescue Department continue to serve unincorporated South Fulton County with the latest and greatest in fire protection equipment. FGTV's Priscilla Ortega has the story on how fire safety has been greatly improved. These three new fire engines were specifically designed for the Fulton County Fire Department. They each include new safety and technology features that will protect the community as well as firefighters. The chief says these new engines were a much needed addition. Three new fire engines are ready to roll out at a moment's notice. We're replacing probably two thirds of our fleet with new uh, superior engines. The Spartan fire engines are packed with features, including a rear and passenger side camera that will help the driver safely maneuver around traffic. Inside the truck, the controls are at the firefighter's fingertips instead of across the console. They also have a high performance engine, 500 horsepower, uh, and that's so that we can carry all of the hose and all of the ancillary equipment we need to deliver the service. Fire Chief Larry Few also says those powerful new engines will help keep response times in unincorporated South Fulton to about six minutes or less. The new engines were unveiled at Welcome All Park summer camp so kids can learn more about fire safety. We try to enhance their lives by providing additional information and things that will be a benefit to them. Health, safety, what to do in the event of a fire is part of that effort to make sure that we're meeting the needs of children and families in our community. The older engines, which were about 12 years old on average, will now be used as backup engines for when the new ones are undergoing maintenance. The fire chief says the department will receive another new engine sometime in 2017. Reporting from Welcome All Park, I'm Priscilla Ortega for FGTV. Thank you, Priscilla. Joining us now to share more details about his department's hottest new members is Fire Chief Larry Few. First of all, Chief Few, thank you for being here. My pleasure. Thank you. Uh, congratulations on getting the new fire engines. Please talk about why they were so necessary. Uh, these engines were necessary because our fleet at, that we currently have, it was aged. Uh, it was more than uh, 12 years old. And they spend a lot, when you have an engine that old, uh, they usually spend a lot of time in the shop and the response is unreliable in them. So getting the new engines in will greatly incre increase our efficiency, reduce our dime down times, and we'll be able to respond uh, to the community in a more efficient manner. Now we saw some of the features that those engines have. What makes them so different from what you've had in the past? Well, the new engines come with, of course, the uh, cameras on them on the rear and on the passenger side. We also have in these engines uh, the anti-rollover capabilities. Also, uh, for the uh, firefighters that are riding inside the compartment, they also have uh, sensors on them to make sure that everyone is seated and are riding safely. That is the main responsibility of the driver is to make sure everyone's seated and get the crew there to deliver the service in a safe and efficient manner. So these engines have that. Also, we have these high performance engines. We have over 500 horsepower under the hood of these, these engines. So we're able to get there in a safe and efficient time uh, without having to sit there to build up air pressure or do any of those things that will cause us uh, a reduced response time, uh, I'm sorry, an increase in response time. And, and the dovetail off of that, um, you said you do expect it, it response times to get much, much lower. Has that been an issue in the past? Well, uh, all modern fire departments all over the United States uh, seek to get there on the scene to deliver a service in a fast and efficient and safe manner. So as we look at unincorporated Fulton County, our average response time is hovering around six minutes and 30 seconds. We want to reduce that so that we can get there on scene 
with around the four to five minute mark, having these new engines uh, with reduced uh, downtime to be maintenance on uh, or breakage will allow us to do that. Uh, it's all about delivering that service, delivering service with uh, speed uh, and, and efficiency. And that's what uh, these new engines will allow us to do. Now, they have a unique look to them as well. That platinum color cab is unique to Fulton County. Why was that look chosen? We, we chose that just for the reason you just said. We want it to be unique. Uh, if there were a thousand fire engines uh, parked in uh, the football stadium, you would easily be able to pick out the uh, Fulton County engines because they have that platinum top. It gives us a distinct uh, eye advantage and they look very, very good on the streets and people are able to identify with them as being uh, their community engines. So we chose that because it was unique. I don't know of any other department in the Atlanta metro area that have uh, that type of top. So we felt like it looked good in the color scheme and it gave, gave us some distinct uh, uh, eyesight recognition in the community. So that's what we chose. We chose that platinum uh, top. Now we saw in Priscilla's story there that the engines were unveiled to some of the kids on the last day of summer camp at Welcome All Park. Talk a little bit more about that unveiling. You know, we always get into the school systems to bring uh, fire prevention education to our kids because we know that if we can teach them, get to them really, really early in their school years, that they will spread that to the parents, uh, to their friends. So what better area to expand uh, fire prevention uh, than to bring the fire engines to where they're in summer camp, summer programs, to the schools. So we felt it very important to un unveil it to the, 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 the primary uh, students uh, so that they can understand the whole realm of how prevention and mitigation through uh, those, those fire engines uh, present when they come out to deliver that service. So that was very important for us to get to the primaries. Now, I know a lot of folks like to name their car when they get one, but it's also tradition to name fire engines. Tell us about the names of these three fire agent engines and why they were chosen. Yeah, in the, in the fire department, there were some, certainly some pioneers in the delivery of fire protection to unincorporated Fulton County. And we thought, thought it was very, very important to talk to uh, 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 the families of those pioneers that have gone on and laid the groundwork for the department today. So we named them after three pioneers, uh, Chief Gibson, uh, Chief Strong, and uh, Chief Emerson. These were pioneers in the formation of the Fulton County Fire Rescue Department, and certainly they have family members that are still on the department. Um, and it was very important for us to make contact with the family, let them know that we have not forgotten them, that we're building our fire protection on the groundwork that these pioneers have set for us. And we're constantly improving. So we wanted to bring them back to the memorial site at Wolf Creek and dedicate those three new engines in their name. So each one of them carries the name of one of those pioneer chiefs. And I know when those families were there, what was their reaction to getting that honor? I will tell you, it was very moving. Uh, the ceremony in and of itself was a very moving ceremony. They felt honored that we thought of them to bring them back uh, to a memorial site and dedicate those engines in the names of their loved ones. Uh, so often uh, we come into the fire service, we spend our time there to, to deliver a service and give the best that we got uh, and uh, our family sacrifice. Uh, these families felt very heart warmed that we remembered them, uh, that we remember their loved ones, the ones that have gone on to lay the groundwork. They were honored that we did this and certainly it was our honor to name these engines uh, uh, in, after them. And just wanted to share, if you could, share with us your final thoughts about, about these new engines finally going into service. My final thoughts are that we are in the business of delivering service with impact and efficiency. These engines certainly will allow us to do that. Uh, they will allow us to get out into the community to, to interact with our HOAs, to, with businesses, to bring the message home 
the unincorporated Fulton County Fire Rescue Department is here to deliver a service and deliver it with impact and efficiency. Fire Chief Larry Few, thank you so much for your time today and for all that you and your men do to keep us all safe. Thank you very much. Now, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Up next, we'll see if you have what it takes to join Chief Few staff. Now, driving those new county fire engines looks exciting, but do you have what it takes to make it as a firefighter? Deputy Chief Charles Stubbs is here to talk about the grueling schedule of academic and physical skills that recruits need to master to begin their careers as firefighters. First of all, thank you for joining us, Chief. Thank you for having me today. Before we get into your career in firefighting, what does having those new fire engines mean to you? Well, that's a giant morale booster for our people. Having the new equipment, it looks good on the street. They're proud to be riding in them. And when we pull up, they're proud to show them off. That's a, a giant morale booster. Plus, they're new and reliable engines, which we don't have to worry about breaking down so often. Now, one thing you're always thinking about, I know, is recruiting. How often are you looking for new people to come in? And can anyone apply? It turns out that about once a year we'll send something out because for a recruit school we need to have 12 to 15 people. So if we're looking for one or two, we'll send something out to try to get certified firefighters. But for just the basic recruit school, anyone over the age of 18 that has a clean criminal history can apply. We mentioned at the beginning of the segment there's a grueling schedule of academic and physical skills training that's involved. What's involved on that academic side in particular? On the academic side, every week they learn a new skill. Uh, one week will be first aid, one week will be fire behavior, one week will be ladders, things like that. And they have to take a written exam every Friday. That exam they have to pass with a score of 70 or above. If they fail that exam, then Monday, the following Monday, they get another chance. And if they fail it the second time, then we have to take up their equipment and ask them to leave and separate their employment. Wow. What about the physical side? What's involved in that particular side of training? On the physical side, every morning starts out with PT. We rotate our PT. One morning is sit-ups, push-ups, planks, and running. And then the next morning will be job-related things like pulling hose, simulating swinging an axe, raising ladders. So every morning starts out with PT. And as we go through the school, it gets more physical with the outside stuff and we head toward the culmination of burn week where we spend an entire week at the burn center in uh, Douglas County where they see live fire every day in the heat and they learn to put those fires out. How many weeks are involved with all of that training and what kind of schedules do the recruits have to maintain on a daily basis? It is a 14 week class and we start out with a lot of classroom, but every day, as I said, starts with PT. Some weeks it's mostly classroom where they stay in the classroom and learn stuff. As we get further on, then they'll do classroom sessions in the morning and then go outside in the afternoon and do practicals, like when they learn about hose. We teach them in the morning about the hose, and in the afternoon we go out into the parking lot and we pull that hose and we flow some water, and it gets pretty, pretty intense, and, and the, they learn to get hot and how to handle that kind of stuff. Now, earlier you alluded to the fact that not everyone makes it through the training. Why is that, and is that person allowed to try to try it again? Well, we, we plan to lose three to five recruits every recruit school, either due to the physical demands that they didn't realize were going to be placed on them or the academic demands that are placed on them. Um, if they are asked to leave, then the next time we ask for applications, they are welcome to come back and they'll have a better understanding about what they're about to get into. Now, when you talk about certifications, what certifications recruits, that recruits will garner during their initial training regimen? When they come out of recruit school, they will all be National Professional Qualified MPQ Standard Firefighters 1 and 2. They'll be MPQ Hazmat awareness and operationals. They'll also have pressurized container and first responder for medical. Now when the recruits training is done, when do they actually start working and how are they assigned to a specific precinct? As soon as they graduate, within the next 
two to three days, depending on what shift they're assigned, they'll go immediately into the station and start riding the trucks. And the way we determine that is I meet with the training staff and the instructors that taught them for the 14 weeks, and we discuss amongst us which station would best fit which recruit so they could use their strengths in, in certain places and build on their weaknesses. So we sit and have a meeting and decide where they're assigned, and ultimately that falls on me is to give them their final assignment. And what would you like viewers to know about the firefighters that are protecting us out there and the job that they're doing every day? Well, what I'd like to say is here in Fulton County, we have the best trained firefighters you'll find in the state of Georgia. These firefighters come out of training with all the skills they need to perform the job, and they enjoy performing the job, and they welcome people to come by the stations and speak to them. So if you have a question or would just like to view, visit the station, feel free to stop by any fire station. The gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen there will be happy to see you and happy to answer any questions. And like I tell everybody when they come visit the stations, whether you're a kid or an adult, if you'd like to get up in that fire truck, you're welcome to. They let me in it every day. <laughs> Deputy Chief Charles Stubbs, I'll let that be it. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you for having me. We'll be back to wrap things up right after this. Now that's all of our time. Thank you for joining us for Fulton at Work and a very special thanks to our guests today. Now we want to connect with you online. Please check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'm Daryl Carver and we'll see you next time.